welcome to the Life Reboot series. I'm so excited to have you here today. And I'm excited today to introduce a very special guest, Heather Burright, and she is going to talk to us about her Life Reboot. So Heather, thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm Heather Burright, and I um, own a consulting business called Skill Masters Market. And I also do some career coaching as well, um, specifically for women who are looking for a career change, um, just helping them walk them through a process to help them figure out um, what it is that they might want to do and whether that will actually be a good fit for their interests, their wants, their needs, their skill sets. Um, and we just walk it all the way through the process so that they have clarity and confidence about what might be a next step for them. It's so needed, and I can't tell you how many times in my life I've really wished for someone like you, like a magical genie to give me a person just like you to kind of give me guidance. Um, so today we're going to talk about your life reboot and get into a little bit of the details of your journey and, and um, what that looked like for you. And at the end of that, I would like to get into a little bit more of a conversation about the career coaching and kind of highlight that. So tell us how it started and, and what it looked like for you. Yeah, so um, probably sometime last year, I started looking into um, career coaching. I was working full time um, for a large national nonprofit and uh, had piloted some career coaching on the side, thinking that might be something that I um, start to do and uh, just didn't put myself fully into it at the time. Um, and then what I like to say is COVID happened. <laughs> and so um, with the um, coronavirus changes, I found myself furloughed um, and I suddenly had a lot of time on my hands. And um, I just felt like I had been given the gift of time. Um, I didn't necessarily need, need to just run out and find another job um, with a furlough. There's a chance that you'll um, be asked to return to your organization. And so um, I was open to that possibility, but also wanted to figure out what's something that I can do here and now um, so that I'm continuing to grow, I'm continuing to learn, contribute, um, use my skills, and really figure out if I could make uh, my business work. And so I used that time to get myself set up um, both in the consulting side where I help organizations identify the skills that their people will need to drive business goals and then um, help create those learning solutions or coaching solutions to help their people um, develop those skills that we've identified. Um, but then also on the career coaching side, really looking at how do I, um, how do I really help women gain that clarity and confidence that they need. And so I had piloted the year previously um, and just wanted to really formalize that and make that an opportunity that I could, um, I could, I guess, advertise, but um, make it an opportunity that people could really see themselves in and, um, and then come to me for that career coaching. You know, it's like, it's so funny you say that because I always see it as life at this point, it's life before COVID and life after COVID because there's a distinct delineation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my husband uh, freelances and hasn't worked since March because of COVID. So I know all about that. I love that you said the gift of time. I use the gift of time because I think that's a wonderful mindset pivot for people who feel like lost and who are looking at a career that, you know, I know a lot of people who were at a brick and mortar and now they're online and they're just like, I don't know how to make this model work. Um, but to use the gift of time to nurture some skills that either are really, you're already very good at that you could monetize or skills that you may have wanted to be good at, but you've put them on the back burner because there was never enough time. And it's like, now's the time to do the things you've said you never had time to do. Yes. You know, yes. And I, I would never, um, I would never say that, that my situation is the same as someone else's situation. Um, you know, there are a lot of factors to having the gift of time. Um, I do have two small kids. And so that is also a factor in time, especially when schools are closed and you're homeschooling. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I was able to, um, to thankfully, um, finish out schooling for home at home for my oldest. Um, and then, um, my youngest is too, so just kind of keep her out of trouble <laughs> kind of thing, while also focusing in on 
you know, making my business work and, you know, expanding my network or, um, starting an Instagram, um, uh, what's it called? Handle, I guess. I don't know. Um, to really try to figure out if I can, if I can do this. And, um, you know, I, I continue to kind of say if, but in my heart, I believe that I, I will, and I am, um, and, my, my hope, and it's a trusting hope, it's a faith-filled hope, um, is that it will work, right? It's not a hope, it's not a wishy-washy hope. Yeah. It's not like, I it's a belief that this happens, but it's a belief. I believe this will happen. I have that hope um, that it will happen. And so um, I've been able to really use this time to, to do that investigation, to do that research, um, to test my ideas, to talk to people that would potentially be hiring me either in an organization or as a career coach. And um, what I found is that there is a need for these things. And um, I, I believe I do have the skills already in place for it. So it's just about positioning um, me and my business to be able to do that work. Well, one of the things that I, I've heard already that positions you different from what I've been hearing a lot out there is um, for women like me, you know, I I always used to get really hard on myself, be really hard on myself because I started in the movie business and and worked in the motion picture industry for a decade. And (laughs) through the course of life's funny little detours, I ended up being an educator and working in the school system for 13 years. And then now to becoming an author and an online entrepreneur and, and host. And it's like, all along, whenever I would look for that next adventure, I kept really being hard on myself. Like, well, what does the education industry have to do with the motion picture industry? And what does coaching have to do with, you know, and, and what I found is I love what you said is you help people find clarity because there are so many people that want to pivot their career right now. There are so many people that are looking at this as, you know, I could work from home now. I've, I've seen that it's possible, or perhaps they been furloughed and they want to find something else that they can do. But for you to uh, not just say like, we'll help you find the next job, but to gain clarity around your skill set, because sometimes we don't even know what we're really good at. You know, I, I, what's your superpower? What's your, I don't know. And, and for a long time, I thought I didn't have any. And it's like having that someone to help you find your own gifts makes a difference to what career choices you make. It does. It does. And one of the things that I did in my full-time role was um, manage a competency model. And so um, for those of you who aren't familiar, a competency model is really um, a cluster of skills that might you might need to be successful within an organization or in particular um, like areas of leadership. Um, and so they're really about the soft skills. Like there are some technical skills that are needed, obviously, in any, in any position or any organization. Um, but it's really about, you know, communication. Um, how, you know, how do you communicate? How can you improve your communication skills? It's about making good decisions. It's some of those things that you can gain those skills in, in any area and take those with you. They're yours. And so mm, um, I, I work that. with yeah, it's great. And, and you use it in so many different ways. And so I worked with HR leaders um, to really think through um, how do you look for those things when you're hiring or how do you develop those things in your people once they're on board with you. Um, and so I feel like because I have done that work, I'm positioned to um, take clients on as a career coach and help them uncover what those skills are. And those skills are transferable. So even if you're doing them yes. currently, in an education realm and you're wanting to pivot um, and you know start your own business or um, go into the corporate world, become an instructional designer. I've heard that quite a bit going from education to instructional design. I think mostly uh, to get some work from home options, but you have skills that you can take with you. Um, even if it's not a one-for-one job opportunity, you are learning things and using things in your day-to-day that you can use other places and we can identify those together. A hundred percent. And you know, it's funny because as I've been researching this reboot your life concept and the life reboot series and talking and talking to people, 
I, I find that career is one of the major, it's like career and relationships are two of the biggest points of discontentment, right? It's mm -hmm. two of the major life reboots that go on in a person because those are the areas where I find the most dissatisfaction. And when I've asked people like, if you don't, what, what is it about your job you don't like, first of all, because usually it's not the job necessarily, but maybe the tasks that they're doing or the freedom that they get or the decision making, you know, how much input they or how respected they feel. It's, it's like things like that. Or I'm just tired of the nine to five grind. Like I want to work from home. I want the freedom of a schedule. I have little babies that, you know, if I could go back in time and be home for my babies, I think I might've made different choices in hindsight. You know, I was, I was a teacher, so I had a good schedule, but I was dropping babies off at, at a daycare every morning and it was really hard on me. Um, but then after I ask people like, well, why are you dissatisfied with your job? The next question is always like, well, why aren't you seeking out the job you really want? And the answer that I often hear is, I don't know what that is. I don't know what I'm good at. I don't know what I want to do. And I know that was true for me for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, people don't necessarily know what their options are. And if they have thought of what an option might be, they're not sure if it would be a good fit. And that's part of the process that I use is to help uncover what those options are. And then let's do some testing. Let's figure out if it might be a good fit for you. Um, I am a big believer in idea testing. And so, no, you might not be able to just go, you know, shadow somebody on the job, though if you can, that's great. Um, but you probably have someone in your network who does that job and can you talk to them? Can you get on the phone with them? Can you text them? Can you email them? Uh, maybe you don't know anyone in your network that has that job, but somebody in your network probably does know someone who has that job. And so how can we really um, start to leverage the network that we have so that you have more information going into it so that you're more confident that the decision you're making about a career change will work for you. I think that number one, just in the, in the sense of who you are as a person for saying like, okay, I've got this time and I'm going to use it to the best of my ability to do the things I want. So I think that gives you an edge as far as allowing people the courage to do the same because you've shown courage and you've done that. And so now when you help people through it and say it's possible, they see it through example. Cause I'm a big fan of like, you know, I don't know if it was my 13 year teaching education, but um, you, you can't teach by saying, you have to teach by showing. And so you've done that. And I think also it is so necessary right now. I think so many people who are suffering, you know, from depression, who are sad, who feel isolated, a, a huge part of it is career related. There's a huge economic um, component that people are facing right now. And, and so much of it is tied to people needing really good advice for the next professional step that they should take. The world looks different. All of these businesses, you know, have transitioned to online and there are some that are not going back to the physical model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even in education for teachers, when they, when they said, okay, all teachers online now, like right now, for some of the younger teachers, it was a really easy transition, but for others, it was, they didn't have a technological skill set to offer and it was mm -hmm. daunting. So I really think it's so poignant and resin um, and, and relatable what you're doing right now. I think your services are so needed for so many people during this really uncertain time. Um, and I'm really, you know, every reboot story I get is different. Um, some are a little bit more, some are more cerebral like mine was and some are more action oriented like I think yours might be. And it's such a nice contrast to see just the ways in which people um, unstick, you know, like get yeah. out of their slum. There are so many opportunities out there. Um, so I feel like anybody who feels stuck, um, whatever they need to do to get unstuck, they'll find opportunity on the other side, right? Whether it's yes. you know, a conversation with a friend or a mentor, hiring a coach, whatever it looks like, whatever you can do to get unstuck, there's always going to be opportunities on the other side. Exactly. And I, I say this all the time. You've heard me say it if you follow me, but I'll say it again. 
Don't let age stop you at any age, at any phase. Starting over is always possible. And hopefully with the Life Reboot series, we give you some of the courage, skills, and inspiration to know that um, it's possible for you as well. Heather, I really appreciate you and what you do. I'm going to link her contact information into the Facebook group and into the YouTube channel so that anybody who would like to speak a little bit more with Heather and get some career um, coaching or just some insight into what she does, we'll have a way to contact her directly. It's been an honor to share your journey um, and I thank you very much for leading the way for women to know what's possible. Thank you so Thank much, you. Heather. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye.